Hey, welcome back. In this video, I just want to talk about energy quickly and just describe it, have a video on it so we can always come back to and check it for reference if needed. Um, but basically, energy is described as the capacity to do work. Um, it's when we're when we're talking about energy in this case and dynamics, we're going to refer to it as the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. But before we get into what each of those are, um, we're just going to also say that energy is otherwise, uh, aside from being described as capacity to do work, it is otherwise like a measure of the change imparted to a system. That's a way that people like to refer to this. So the units of energy are joules. That's the same as newtons times meters. Um, and again, that was the same as the units as work. So in the last couple of videos, when we're talking about a moving force doing work on an object, um, when we have a moving force that does work on an object, the energy that's imparted to the object is equal to the work done by the force. So that's a really important point, and I just want to make sure that you really, you really do get that. So when a moving force does work on an object, the energy imparted to the object is equal to the work done by the force. So what's happening in almost all of these problems is we're going to have like two states, like you know, point in time one and point in time two. We're going to have energy, the, so the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy at point one, and then we're going to do some work on the object, and then we're going to have point two in time where we're going to have a different amount of energy, and the difference is going to be the work that was done. So the expression for kinetic energy is just capital T, that's how we refer to kinetic energy, is equal to one half mv squared. I'm assuming most people have seen this in high school and this shouldn't be new, but it's definitely worth committing to memory as you're studying dynamics or at least this section of dynamics. But yeah, so kinetic energy is completely related to the motion of an object and specifically it's related to the speed of the object. We have that term in there for velocity, super important that it's there. Um, while we're here, let's talk about uh, units. So m is mass in kilograms. Actually, I'll write it on the side. So m is mass in kilograms, and v is velocity in meters per second. And that's all squared, right? So that means we have kilogram meters squared per second squared, which is the same thing as kilogram meter per second squared times meters and this first part this first part right there is newtons so that's equal to newton meters which is equal to joules now when we're talking about potential energy we denote that with a capital v and we actually are in, in these mechanical problems are going to split it into potential energy uh, gravitational potential energy so vg and also elastic potential energy ve this referring to springs, the elastic potential energy of springs. So this whole expression, V is equal to Vg plus Ve, is referred to as the potential function. And ultimately, potential energy in general is for conservative forces, and it's related entirely to the initial and final position relative to a reference that we choose. It's going to be a different reference for gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy or elastic potential energy, and you'll see that in one second. So let's write the expression, I guess, for gravitational potential energy first. So we've got Vg, and this is just equal to mgh. I think most people probably have seen this again in a high school level course. Um, M is mass in kilograms, G is acceleration due to gravity, and H is height in meters. You might see this written sometimes maybe as WY, W just referring to mass times gravity, so MG, and Y just being another way to write H for height. And if you do want to talk about units here, just to confirm that this is in units of joules, again mass, we have kilograms. Uh, acceleration due to gravity is meters per second squared and height is in meters and again we have this kilogram meters per second squared which is equal to newtons and then times that meters which is equal to joules or if you've already converted mg to weight then weight is in units of newtons and y is meters so again joules all right and then just the expression for elastic potential energy is VE, which is equal to positive one half 
kx squared. Now, it's always positive because whether we're stretching or compressing a spring, the spring force will always be directed towards the unstretched position. It always wants to return to that position. It's always going to give you a positive value. And then for the rest, we have this letter k. That's the spring constant. And x, which is the distance that we've basically stretched or compressed the, uh, the spring. The units here are going to be newtons per meter for k, and x is in meters, so we have meters squared. One of those is going to cancel out, and we're left with newton meters, which is joules. All right, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to run over basically just the super basic definition of energy and the different kinds, kinetic and potential, that we're going to be finding, and then also the different types of potential energy, which are gravitational and elastic. And that should be enough for now. Um, I think the next couple of videos will be going over the uh, conservation of energy and the principle of work and energy. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys there.